Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. I'm Angela Wolf, and we are at your side virtually. So welcome to the sewing party today. Actually, it's going to be a little bit of embroidery, a little bit of quilting. Uh, it's an awesome show. We have Barb and Kathy joining us. I'm so excited. So if you've never been here before, say hi. Say where you're from. I am a Brother Brand Ambassador, and we are live on Brother Sewing and Crafting Facebook and YouTube pages. So leave your comments. You can ask questions throughout the whole thing. I always try to answer those or send them to the girls, I would say. <laughs> and uh, anyways, it's almost the fourth, a great long weekend. And I think I saw a sneak peek of a project down here that you might like to do before the weekend. So let's bring the girls up. Hi, Barb and Kathy. How are you? Great. How are you today? Oh, wonderful. Great to see you. And I see that the brother fans are rolling in saying hello. All right. So, uh, by the way, for those that have never been here before, uh, these two are fabulous brother educators. And since maybe they've never met you, Barb, why don't you just say something about how long you've been with brother? I've been with brother about 12 years now. Long awesome. time. <laughs> Kathy, how about you? Well, I'm the newbie, so I've only been with brother a little over three years now. But That's I'm a long time, though. <laughs> That's a long time. <laughs> so if you've never been here, you can go back and watch some of their earlier shows, which were fantastic. Actually, you can go binge watch all weekend if you want. I believe we have over 200 at your side virtually shows, and now we have a new one, and I'm so excited. So what are we going to be doing today? So I'm going to be showing them how to custom quilt, so how to create designs to quilt your quilts with that are completely custom. You make them and you use them. That's awesome. And I'm going to follow along, but I added a little bit of an, a different angle to mine. I wanted to be able to do sort of an edge to edge type custom quilt design. And so also utilizing my new magnetic sash frame so that I could quilt end to end, but from the top of the hoop to the bottom of the hoop, because most of your edge to edge quilting designs connect on the sides instead of the top and the bottom. That's gonna be a great tutorial. You know, that is like one of the biggest trends right now as well. And I think that people just love watching how to do that. And you're gonna be using the Brother products, which a lot of them have at home, which is awesome. All right, so who wants to kick it off? I guess I will. Sounds great. All right, I'm going to switch my camera and I'm going to show you on screen. Um, hang on here. We're... I don't see where I can switch my camera for all of a sudden. Why is that? <laughs> just because we just tested that, it just disappeared, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, never mind. I found it. Sorry about that. And we're going to go here. So, I'm going to start with a lot of you have seen this design that I did on a quilt. So I did it for a boy's quilt. And many people said, how in the world did you find or come up with that design? So I'm going to walk through how to do that with the new one. So this one is leaves for a fall table runner that I did. And I'm going to put it on my machine and scan it in the design center. So we go into the design center. This leaf, fern looking leaf up here, is how I can choose if I want to scan it as a line image or illustration. I want to create a line design. But before I do that, no, oh, it's not going to let me do it here. I want to do it as a line. Otherwise, it will do it as a satin stitch. So I'm going to go in here and sorry, I just did it again. <laughs> and I'm going to go line design, scan, and OK. While it's scanning, I'm going to show you how I got there. So I started with free clip art. So you've got to make sure it's free and you have the rights to do what you want with it. And you just copy out some leaves. Now, obviously, these are way too small to quilt with. So then you start on your copy machine and you just make some of the leaves bigger and you keep making leaves bigger, whatever, till you find the ones you want. And then you're going to take these pages and trace on a piece of paper whichever leaves you want and position them however you want. So when the, the scan comes up in here, you'll see which leaves I chose and how I tied them together. Now, one of the really important things to remember is you want them to all 
touch at some point so that there's no tie-offs in the back. So can you see my leaves? All right. You see that okay? Looks good. Yeah, that great. Okay. So then in here, I'm going to crop in a little bit to get rid of some of the eraser, but I can't get rid of too much because I really filled this thing up which is fine. I'm going to say, okay. And I'm going to see some of the eraser lines left over and I'm going to say set. And I'm, I know that it, it scanned as a line design because I can see what stitch it is up here. Then I'm just going to grab my eraser and I'm going to make this bigger and pan to the top and bottom because that's where I left. Can you see what's left there? And I'm just going to take my, whoops, take the pan off, take my finger, and erase what was there. Now I can still see the green of the eraser. If you don't want to see that, and I don't like to see that, on here, you can go all the way to the left and the green will disappear. It's not gonna stitch. Now I need to erase what was on the bottom down here. And again, just take my finger and erase. And if I miss, if I go into the leaf by mistake, just undo it. Simple, but don't do what I did and do all of that before you pick up your finger or it will bring all of it back. <laughs> and I do that all the time. Silly me, I just keep going and going and then, whoops, I make a mistake. Okay, so now you have your design. And um, when I say next, I get used to do some things with this. I don't really want to do much of anything with it. I'm very happy with it, but I do link it. And when I link it, if it's not one red box, then I know I have a tie off somewhere. And I don't know if you can see this, but there's a low red box down here. So I missed erasing that. Simply return, grab your um, eraser again, and go ahead and get rid of that. Then OK, and again, you're going to have to link it again. But now I know I have one red box, which means I have no breaks, and it's one solid. Uh, thing. If we have time, I'll go back and I'll show you if you do have a break, how to fix it. Why don't I just do that now? I'm going to make a break. Let's say. Uh, <laughs> I love that, Barb. I'm going to make a break. Make a break and fix it. <laughs> so there, I just erased. So those are no longer connected. So if I go to my pencil, I can just draw a line. And it's not exact, but as long as it touches, no one is going to see that it's not exact. It, you will never see it. So, so this is this I felt it runner. And you can see that everything is quilted with those leaves except for what's in a block. So this was a blank block just to balance. So it's all the way around. And then what I did was I erased what was on top of this block so that it wouldn't stitch. Very simple. So that's my first example of how to create a custom quilt design. I did free clip art. That's the same thing I did with those trucks and all that. But here's another custom design. I don't know how well you can see that. It's oh, just look at that. That's beautiful. Well, it's just flowers. So how did, I'm not an artist. I did not draw it. Do not turn off your <laughs> video because you think you have to be an artist. So this is what I put it on. It's a scarf that I then put silk dupioni around the border. And this is a faux like velvet around the binding. But how did I get this design? I simply traced it off of the fabric. Wow. See that? And that's what I use to quilt the border with. Inside of this, I used a crackle, you can see that, all over the whole pattern um, with invisible thread. So you're seeing it now because of the lighting, but it's very hard to see at a distance. And then I filled it with crystals just because I wanted to. So again, oh another God, way. Barb, that is so beautiful. That actually looks like a, even because you have that custom trim around the edges, it looks like a piece of fabric, just like off of a bolt of fabric, like a beautiful, very expensive piece of fabric off the bolt. Yeah. Nope. It was a scarf. Uh, it might've been an expensive scarf. It was a gift, but. <laughs> <laughs> now it's more expensive. <laughs> right. So then the next one I'm going to show you, I did a Christmas, um, table runner. No, actually, this is a wall hanging. It's too big for a table runner. 
Um, and these designs inside these blocks are all off of the luminaire. And this is one of them. And I used um, May and I used satin. You know, I was a garment sewer before I was a quilter. So I use all kinds of stuff. So what I want to show you is how you quilt around a design. That's what this is. And then how to change this to look more like what you want rather than what it'll come up as. Then I'll also show you how I came up with this design. And then also this is another way. So there's four things on here that you can use for your quilting. So we're first going to bring in the design that's in the machine. This is under category 15 and it's number 18. So there's the dove. And I want to quilt around it. So we're going to go open up edit and put an outline around it. This is an outline of a flower. It will outline anything you put in there, anything. I always give it some distance away from it because this is fabric and it will move. And I don't want it to stitch on my wing or any other part of it. So I keep it away a little bit. If there was a hole inside of this, I could turn that on and fill the hole inside. But there's not in this one. So in the machine, your bottom right corner always tells you where to go next. So it says memory, and then it tells you, I'm going to be waiting for you in the design center under that icon. Okay. Now I want to add in the design center, so I go to it right here, um, the rest of the background. So first, under this icon is where my dove is supposed to be. And I always say it lied to me. It's not there, but it is. It's under the flower. So I'm going to go grab my dove and say okay and now i have the outline of the dove and i want to fill around it so i would measure my block and let's say this is a 10 inch block i don't even know i would measure it and i would put in a square and size it to the size of my block so in this case i'm going to size it up to like 10 inches Oop, too much close enough and i always cheat a little bit here i don't do 10 i'll do just like 995. Again, I don't care if it's exactly to the edge. I care over the edge. Okay, so now I want to fill around that. I go to my fills and I'm going to choose this pattern, which is like what I see doves with in their mouth. <laughs> I think it is. And that pattern is, and I'm going to memorize the number. There it is. Okay. And I'm going to leave it red so you can see it. And what did I just do? Red, okay. And fill around outside the dove. But to me, this didn't work because it's straight up and down. And it's like the dove is flying. How wide in the world is straight up and down? So there's an easy fix to that. And that's going to be under your next. But before I go there, remember the box I put in here. I do not want that to stitch. So I go to my line properties and I tell it, don't stitch, come back here with the fill, touch the line, and if it, whoops, wrong line. <laughs> and when it beeps, your knocks at me, it will not stitch, and that's perfect. I just need to give it parameters where to stitch to. So we're gonna say next, and now is where we're gonna make the magic happen. So I want this to flow as though the wind is blowing and the bird is flying. So I'm going to do it like, oh, maybe 30 degrees. And I'm going to look at it and see if I like that. If I don't, I just go back. Oh, yeah, I like that flow. But it's way too much quilting. So I'm going to size this up, make it 200% bigger. Remember, I'm working with the background. Whenever those blue dots are going, it's, it's digitizing. So now that's becoming much more like what I actually stitched. And the only other thing I'm going to do is make it a single run. But first, I'll link it all together. I always link just to make sure it's all going to stitch together. Single run rather than a triple stitch or a double. And I'm good to go. I always save everything in my memory just in case I want to come back and decide to change. In this case, I'm just going to go into embroidery. And there we have it. Now, you're going to say, but wait, you didn't stitch the bird, the dove through the whole sandwich. No, I did not. I made my top first. I put on my, you know, sashing and all that kind of stuff and had extra fabric left over here. And then I came in and all I would stitch is the background. I would use the projector to line it all up. And once it lined up, 
stitch the background and I'm quilting. Makes sense? But that's how you go around a design. Now, that's what, I, what I did on the borders here, again, free clip art. And I found some Christmas There's a bow, the word joy, a cardinal, some holly, another bow, a reindeer, some ornaments, and there's the dove with that stuff in their mouth. So I used these and I did two of them and I can put them, position them four different ways because I can turn them all upside down. So it was pretty hard to see any repeated pattern as I go around because they're all changed every time I put them on. So that's how this was done. And I did it all with gold metallic thread sides. This is very Christmas thing. So then the last thing I want to show you that I did here on these little sashes <clears throat> is I did decorative stitching. And so I'm going to grab in here real quick and show you where to find the embroidery with this icon in here. And it's all the way near the end in the 200, right around 200, are the Christmas things. So here is, there. I used the stocking and the star. I used the package and the carry cane, and I used the um, holly. <laughs> so if you can see here. And Barb, are those, those are all built into the machine, right? Absolutely. Everything on here is built into the machine. I mean, this I created in the design center, mm -hmm. but everything else. So that's where all of this happened for the quilting on this piece. Okay. Absolutely, Absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> all right. So this one is um, one of my favorites. It's all who characters. And in this case, I, again, did a rounded design. I already showed you how to do that. But I did around the design, including the sashing this time. That's different. I don't know that I've seen other people do that. Maybe I have, and I just didn't know it. <laughs> so see how this pattern goes all the way through the sashing around the design. And then <clears throat> to create this quilting design, I simply traced the words on the quilt. So this says bounce. Your rabbit, all those guys. One of them says peekaboo here. So I traced the words and created my pattern. I made it a little bit of a word search to make it fun. So I stuck letters in wherever I needed to so that everything would touch. So there's random words once in a while and you think, oh, but no, it's just B-O. Oh, there's bounds. So it was really fun. And again, four different ways. So it's a little hard to see patterns repeat. Uh, it's more fun to just see how many poos can you find or how many <laughs> Eeyore. <laughs> All right. Then I have this last one for 4th of July, although I have more if I'm, I'm really going fast here. And, no, I I just did stars. and by the way, I see a ton of a uh, few questions rolling in and I'll be sure to get those when she's finished. So don't worry about that. Okay. So I did this um, wall hanging, and it's a soldier boy. I don't know if you can see all that. And I'm going to show you how I quilted his jacket. So this is not cotton. This is uh, probably upholstery fabric. And it literally has a pattern in here. And I drew lines along there to quilt that. I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay. So oh, wow. I'm gonna put this on here. And uh, using the magnetic, the big magnetic frame. But again, this is a sandwich. So I put the whole top together. Then I, you know, put it in a hoop and quilt it. So we're going to go back to the design center. This time I'm going to scan this as an image. I just want that to show up on my screen. So it's going to scan whatever is in here. Um, while it's doing that, I'm going to do one more because that takes a minute to scan. So this is a shamrock table runner. And you're going to ask, how did I do this? This is not built into the machine. It's a pattern. And so I took this after I made it 
and to my copier and I copied it. Literally, I just made a copy of it. <laughs> and then I took a piece of paper and I traced it. Then I scanned this into the machine. And now I have my design to have an instant memo around. So I'll show you that as soon as we finish what we got here. Okay. So <clears throat> there is my sleeve that I want to show you how I work that. And you can make this brighter or you can take it back. And I'll show you why you want to be able to do both of those in a second. Now I'm going to take the stylus and I'm going to draw lines. First of all, I know I want to draw just straight lines. So I use that icon right there. All right. Come back here. Oh, I also want it to be just a line. Okay. So now I've got a line and an icon. And I'm going to make this bigger. Let's say, nope, I think I need to do 400%, 200%. Okay. So now I can see where some of these patterns are or threads in this upholstery fabric. So I, all I have to do is start and end. Uh, I'm going to lighten this up so you can see it better. And I did not do a very good job there. So I'm going to erase it wherever I start and drop it off and I can straighten it up. It's going to stitch or quilt that line. Now, remember I said before you want to connect everything? Well, guess what? These are not going to be connected. So you're going to have tie-offs on the back. Oops, started too high on that one. Again, don't go crazy because I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to see exactly where these are stitching. In. I'll show you up close in a second. So I would do all of these across here. And you can tell when you've got it because it beeps when you start. And you can adjust how straight it is. See, I can make it wherever I want to drop it off. Now, if I go back to the 100% and I kind of got the idea here, I'm going to make this a little darker, start up here, and draw all the way down here. That's pretty good. And then this has one next to it. And one more. And I did all of the sleeves, like sleeve like this. All of his jacket, actually. So now if I lighten this up, you can see what I've got going. Just the lines. So that's what's going to stitch. So more ways to customize what you want to do. So if you can see the stitching on those lines, and they're not exact, but it certainly gives you the look you want. And then I assigned around the edge, I drew around the edge, I assigned the blanket stitch to stitch there. On his lapel, I filled in with the, the diamond shape. On his hat, I did the bricks. So everything has got a different design. This is all um, stars, but it's hard to see. You can see him better here on the firecracker. And also on the firecracker, all of these lines here, I drew and are stitched. So let's see if you can see that on the back here. Yeah, you can see a little bit of that. See those lines there? That's on the firecracker. Oh, yeah. Just barely. Yeah. So all of this is custom quilted. And then up here where the firecracker, you know, has the stars and blows up and all that, I erased. The, I had stars all over everything, but I simply took my finger and erased right along these lines and erased on the star so it wouldn't stitch on those. those hold so, that up again. That looks just gorgeous. Well, wow. it's it's having fun. It's just about having fun. All right, so let me show you how I echoed that other one. We'll get out of here. By the way, this may not be something you know, but in your design center, if you want to image scan and you just scanned it and you, you didn't mean to get out of it, if you go back in here to scan and look in here, it'll have your last scan. It saves it until you scan something new. So that's just a little tip a lot of people don't know. And that was okay. actually one of the earlier questions. <laughs> so, yes, oh. you read their mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I wanted to show you the shamrock, and I don't have it in here, of course. The shamrock is in the design center, which is fine, in the pocket, which is up there. And it's right here. Say okay. So now I want this to echo around it so i have my shape and you i told you how i got my shape <clears throat> literally just drew traced it around 
Um, but I don't want this to be that uh, satin stitch again. I like to blanket stitch around my stuff. So now if I assign that to be the blanket stitch, it will now be blanket stitch. Um, then I'm going to go next and I'm fine with everything the way it is set and okay. And I'm in embroidery. So under embroidery, under edit, you can instant stipple around your design or you can instant echo around your design and you can also do an instant fill now that echo is crazy small so i will change my spacing i think i went about yeah maybe not that big but i went pretty big because how much quilting do you need <clears throat> it is redigitizing, and that's about what i did here see wow another way to custom quilt Inside here, I did a different pattern. This is the diamond pattern. And again, I just erased around it, or you can, if you stand in the shape, you can just fill in the shape, which works perfectly. Okay. Um, one more? Just real quick, I, someone had asked, they have the 10 needle. Uh, they want to know, can they do this on their machine? So you're on My Design Center. And so, yes, if your machine has My Design Center, now if you have the Dream Machine or something like that, you might not have all the features that they're showing on here because this is the Luminaire. But yes, if you, it depends what 10 needle though. If it's the new one, that has the My Design Center, correct? Right. She needs the new one. Yeah. That has so My Design Center. And no, you cannot use My Design Center on your tablet. That is actually built into the machine. You're designing right on the machine. Right. And she can do all of this on the new, anybody can do all of this on the new 10 needle. Yeah. So yes, yes. one more, I won't even show you on the machine. I'll just show you real quick. This is just a placemat. Oh, wrong camera. Hold on. Here I go. <laughs> it's no hard way. to keep track. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There we go. So this is a placemat and it's a built-in design. This is built in and I just turned it into an AK. Okay. And in the design center, then I did this around the outside and I filled in the hands with a different pattern. But what I did that's different is since these hands don't face the same direction, I did not want this running the same direction. That doesn't make sense. So all I did was rotate one of the hands. So again, I mean, it's a little crazy thing, but those are the things that make us um, happy with our end product, right? And then so this is a built cute. in, it's kind of an all around and you can't see it very well on the front, but you can see it on the back. So this is pattern all around on this table runner. But here instead, I just did the lines on the border part, so. So Barb, you have got a gazillion, not really, but you have a lot of quilts and table runners and things like that. What's the average time for somebody, there's a few people in here I know that just got the Luminaire, somebody just got the Stellaire, which you can do all this on your Stellaire except you use your My Design Snap to take your photo instead of scanning. I saw that question, Josie. But um, how long on average does it take you to finish one of these, the smaller ones? Well, that's not fair because I do pieces as I can, you know, like in between other projects. And sometimes they develop as I'm working with them. You know, like I don't know from the beginning where it's going to go. Uh, but, you know, like something like this, it takes a while to cut all that and then to um, piece it all together. That's probably most of the work. But the actual quilting, once you get your design in there, and this is a built-in design, so you just fill the hoop and keep moving it. And when I... Um, do edge to edge, which is not literal edge to edge, but when I fill the whole thing, I stitch this section and then I rehoop and then I bring in this section and I bring in the design. And if they overlap, I simply erase the part that overlaps and you can't tell because most of the patterns are pretty random. If it's a strict pattern that Kathy's probably going to show you, then you can see, you know, it's a different process. But it's, uh, there's all kinds of ways to do it. It just, have fun with it. Don't be under a deadline to have it done by 4th of July. <laughs> yeah, Candy, like, don't be like. <laughs> and so during the pandemic, I did a series of 12 table runners, one for each month. So I have lots of different 
ways of doing them. And that was just a lot of fun to do. Absolutely gorgeous. So uh, the shamrock, can you, I don't know if you can see that question, but they want to know, did you cut it out on the scan and cut to place it for the applique? Just out of curiosity. No, these are uh, one and a half inch blocks inside the shamrock. Let's see if I can show you one that shows a little better. So they're all together. This is quilt, you know, a quilt pieced together. Oh, one and a half yeah. Now we, I can see that now. Actually, I thought it was applique too. Lois no, is so right. But yes, it's, wow. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to see on the camera, but all those little different squares of fabric. And then when it's quilted over, it kind of does look like one piece. It does look like one piece. Absolutely stunning. <laughs> Just fun. <laughs> wow. Very fun. Everybody also mentioned that they're admiring the quilts behind your head. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> That's covering up. So, Kathy, you are you are going even more with uh, some quilting. Do you want to take it away for a little bit? Sure. I'll take it away. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a project started for the 4th of oh. July. Wrong one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so I oh, think you can that's see cute. The quilting in it. Oh, I love it. So what inspired this piece was my youngest grandchild will be turning one on July 7th. And his room is done in a nautical theme. So we're celebrating his first birthday on 4th of July. Hence the red, white, and blue for 4th of July, but the nautical theme for his decor. <laughs> so I was, I wanted a, an anchor design. And I don't know if you can see my anchor. I mean, they're all yeah. different. Oh, yes, we can see that. So hold that up there just for a second. One more, so people can just focus on where that, you can see the anchors. Don't look at the fabric, look at her stitching. There's you see one it really good on the red. Yeah. yeah. So wow. how I did that was, I, like Barb, I found some clip art. And I just randomly traced anchors on this sheet of paper. And then from the anchors, I went in and drew to connect them lines with loop-de-loops to connect them in between. And how I got this to my machine was I used the My Design Snap app. Um, and I took the picture and brought it over to my machine that way. So, um, and that's how all of our Stellaire friends that are asking, can I scan it in the way that Barb, uh, the Barb just did it? No, you do your My, De My Design Snap app, take a photo, and it goes right into the machine. And if you don't know how to do that, that's been shown many times on previous At Your Side episodes. Yes. And if I hadn't have been, um, I guess, brain dead this morning, I would have actually brought my phone in here with me, but I did not. It's still out in the other part of the house <laughs> you know it's live so what are you gonna do <laughs> exactly um, so I'm gonna go to my um, other camera because even though I brought it in through my design snap it's still there so I'll show you how I did this from going forward okay yep all right we're switching cameras Everybody saying happy birthday, happy birthday. Marta, happy birthday and happy birthday to your grandson. All right. We can see your screen perfectly. Okay. So there's my embroidery design, but I'm going to go back home. Um, and I'm going to go into my design center. And like Barb, I went to the little fern leaf looking icon up there. I said I was, I wanted line design. And where Barb scanned her frame, her scanning frame, I brought this in via um, my 
wireless LAN. So you can see I've got several different scans already saved and I think this is the one that might be my anchors because I've done several. It is. So I just set it. Typically when you send something through my Design Snap app, the last image you brought in is going to be the first one in the, the list. So I'm just going to set this. And here's another way that you can change your stitch type. Once I've brought in the image down here at the bottom of my screen, I can touch that icon and I want a single run. We'll change it to red so you can see it. And I'll just say, okay. And like Barb, I've got some stuff at the top that I need to erase. Or I could return and maybe try and crop some of that out. Oops. But I've got this really close to the top of the thing. So I may have to do some erasing. I'm going to turn off my background for a minute. And it looks pretty good. So I'm going to go to next. And like where Barb would link, I did the same thing because I just want one red box. But I see that I've got a second red box right over here. So that's an indication that I've left a spot that needs to be erased. So we'll go to next again. We'll link it again to make sure that I don't have anything and I didn't erase very well. I think the longest part of this process is maybe just trying to find the clip art that you want to use. So now it's an embroidery design. And one of the things that I really wanted to point out is do you see where I started and, and stopped at the top and the bottom? I usually just take a ruler and make a little mark at the top and then a little mark at the bottom and then I fill in with my anchors and then I connected them. So to show you how I line it up, I have on my machine my magnetic sash frame and I'll line up the top and the bottom. So I'm going to go back home and get the one that I started with this morning and I have saved them in the pocket of my machine. So it was this one that I was using. So I'm going to set it and you can see my anchors, correct? Can you see, can you yep. see them on or do I need to change them to a different color? Let's pick a darker color. Oh, that's better. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to, if you're, if you think you might get seasick, close your eyes for like two seconds. <laughs> my camera around. They're used to it. They're used to it during the live shows and that was way too smooth. You need to drop the camera or something. <laughs> Well, don't say that too quickly. <laughs> oh, so, see, I took you out. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so the way the magnetic sash frame works is if I were to take this thing entirely off, this hoop entirely off the machine, then I could remove all the magnets except for these bottom two and pull and slide it up. But I have another way that I like to do this. And this arm is not strong enough for you to do it that way, but I just take off all my magnets. And since in, I'm in embroidery already, and I'm gonna stitch this same design, 
down here at the bottom of my screen, you'll see the needle with the plus and the minus. I'm going to take it to the first stitch. And I'm also going to turn on my projector. Oops, I can't turn on my projector with it at the first stitch. Sorry. Let's um, turn on our projector first. So we'll move back over here to the bed of the machine. And I'm going to move the viewing box to the top. So I can see, and I don't know if you can see here, you probably cannot see what I'm seeing, but I can see that where the start of the next repeat is, right where my finger is at, and I'm going to just slide this up so the next repeat is there. And I just get close. I don't have to be perfect because I can come back and I can line this up a little bit later on. And then I'm just putting my magnets back on my hoop. So I'm not pulling on the embroidery arm. And another thing to point out, when you're installing these magnets, there's an arrow on the magnet that goes in towards the hoop. So now I can get back over here and on my screen, whoops, I need to to move that so that it lines up so that I can. Oh. Hey, Josie, she's on the luminaire, but sh but sh what she showed you on my design center, it can be used on the still air. So you do not have a projector, not to get you too excited about that though. <laughs> okay, so I've got my projection box right at the top and I did, even though I tried lining it up best I could, I still need to make some more little adjustments to it. So now that I've got it adjusted where I want it to be, now's when I'll go into where that plus one is. And this is something that I really wanted everybody to see. Um, I'm going to take my thread tail and I'm gonna stick it in the hole, maybe, in this foot. And the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want that tie off on the back. So I'm gonna do needle down, and this is a good way for me to check and make sure that I've got everything lined up correctly, and then do needle up, and I'll pull up the bobbin thread. So now I'm gonna hold these two threads together as I start my machine stitching. I'm gonna let it stitch for a little bit and then I'll clip these threads off. So that helps eliminate some of those um, tie-offs that you would have on the back of your quilt. This one I did with a triple run because I really wanted it to stand out. But um, it's just, and I'll let it stitch for a little bit. So you see how it's, how it's stitching? That's beautiful, and it's so quiet. That's what I was thinking. Barb, don't forget you're muted in case you say something. <laughs> okay, so here was 
stitch outs of my trial. So this one I did in a double run, the one in the blue, and it still stood out pretty good. But I really liked the triple run that I did in the red that does better. That's beautiful. And so I would just keep doing the rows of stitching if I were working on a big quilt. If I were working on a big quilt, I might use my um, 10 and 5 eighths by 16 inch hoop so that I could cover more territory in a shorter amount of time. But I played with some other ones. This leaf design is from Scan and Cut Canvas Workspace. So I brought in, how many leaves are on there? Six leaves. I brought in the six leaves. And then you can see again, I put my mark to start and my mark to stop at the bottom and then just drew connecting lines to interconnect them. So you don't always have to use clip art. This was in the embossing designs under Canvas Workspace if you have the embossing kit installed. So you can use those designs as well. And another one that I did and connected with loop-de-loops is hearts and stars. So these are kind of fun just to play even in canvas workspace to find designs and shapes. You could use SVG files or um, there was a new project on um, canvas workspace recently that had a mermaid on it. And so I want to get the mermaid and make her as a background to stitch. But there's the, the hearts and the stars. I didn't do but one repeat. I was just kind of checking those. And there's the leaves. That is That turned out gorgeous. Isn't that pretty cool? It's just, it's more or less another way. I'll come back on and take the machine, I mean, take the camera off the machine. I, I wanted that. to say, go ahead, Barb. I say, Melissa asked, I think it was Melissa a while ago, how big is the memory in the machine? I don't know, but I've got a lot of things in there and I've never gotten to the end. So don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have a lot of things in mine too. And I save all of this stuff. And then, you know, maybe I'll go back and I'll clear it out. But, yeah, you know. You don't always just have to use clip art. You can, if your children or grandchildren draw pictures, you can combine some of those. And as long as they touch, then you can make your own custom quilting designs. Right. You know, uh, I think it was Carol, and actually a few people mentioned they loved that red metallic thread. And someone said, was that metallic thread? I think you mentioned it was. Well, it was metallic thread on the red. Okay, so the one that's what I think that's what they were referring to. Yeah, that's metallic thread. Even your stitch out the red thread on the white fabric looked like it was something sparkly. Well, it was yeah, that's just what I was thinking on that red one. That, one of the last ones that you held up. Yeah, it's not metallic want... thread. That's not metallic. It sure looks metallic. No, it's yeah. not. It's just red okay. polyester embroidery thread. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, you know, and this is a way that you can get something exactly like you wanted it. So what I did was I kind of measured how long this table runner was. And I think I, I came up with I needed four repeats of it. But after I got the third one on, the last one was not going to go all the way to the end. So I just went back in there and you can resize with stitch recalculation 
and I just made it a little bit longer. Nobody's ever going to know that this last repeat is kind of stretched out just a little bit, maybe a half or so. Well, they know and now, but they would not have known. <laughs> and if they're looking that close, you know, oh, well. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. All this right. So, uh, I have a couple this, more samples. I just want to see a little bit more. Yeah, I'd love to. I just have a few more questions for you. So Yvette wants to know, uh, for either one of you, will the metallic thread, like on your first one, will it hold up through washings? I will say yes, yeah. just because I embroider metallic on my garments all the time, and I wash those things like crazy. Right? <laughs> yeah. And the one nice thing about using the metallic with um, the magnetic sash frame, it automatically slows the machine speed down when you're using that for stitching out. So I didn't even have to worry about that. I just put my spool of metallic thread. And I do use the Brother Metallic because I know that question will come up. <laughs> I do too. That's my favorite. So, uh, asking, why do you think that that fabric or that thread shines so much? But wasn't it the triple stitch on there? It was. Mm -hmm. And even when you're using just regular thread, a uh, regular embroidery thread, it does because you have three layers of thread, just gives it a little more oomph. <laughs> there you go. Okay, everybody says yes. They want to see more samples, Barb. They want to see more samples. All right, I'm changing the camera. Yeah. Oh, hi, Kay. Thank you. Um, this I'm wearing my rouge tea, and I ran out of this fabric, but I have some other stuff. So if you check my website out, I'll, I, I have more coming in at the end of the month. But thank you, and happy birthday. I think Marta, Kay have birthdays on the 7th. Who else has a birthday this weekend? It sounds like it's going to be a huge celebration. <laughs> well, my sister-in-law is in from Florida for our family uh, thing today, and it's her yeah. birthday today. Yeah. Oh. It's a fabulous weekend. Okay, so this is the table runner for Easter, and it's just a bunch of different Easter eggs. And you can see better how these are put together. So it's same thing here. And I use the crackle pattern around the outside. I thought that was funny. Use crackle with eggs. <laughs> and then I stitched in the ditch or actually on the eggs. That's all that I did with that one. And I did it all the way over the sashings and everything. This one, I used a pattern that I scanned in, and I'm not sure where that is right now, but it's hearts. So it was just a whole page of hearts, and all of this is done with hearts all the way around um, the hearts in the middle. So this was a Valentine's Day, and I scanned that in for a thing yesterday. This one was done with sunflowers for obvious reasons, because it's sunflowers. So again, I traced the pattern on the front of the pattern and made a couple of front floors and then I, you know, scanned it in and filled it in because you can scan in one page and if it's not too big, you can duplicate it and fill the whole large hoop so you can stitch uh, a whole large area. And again, these are like random and I would put them in one way this time and then I change them another way and maybe another way. Um, and that's how I kind of fill all of those spaces. And I did it all over. So it's even on top of the sunflowers on this one. Just you wow. got to look here. So those are a few. I have more, but I don't have them right at my fingertips. <laughs> those are wonderful, though. And everybody's saying thank you, thank you. I think the best part of having all these samples is it just gives you a little bit of ideas. Even if, okay, so if you're a super beginner, you don't have to do a huge quilt. But as Barb mentioned, she did different table runners for the whole last year. That was my big thing, too. And then I added napkins and then I and, and little uh, mug rugs for cup holders. I mean, just fun stuff. But you're getting to use your machine. You're doing something that if it turns out where it's not so pretty, <laughs> you toss it and try again. Right. But it's really hard to find something that's not cute on there. That's for sure. Yeah. And there's so right, much built in. You know, you can just make fun. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Everybody's saying thank you. I agree. That would be great for a beginner. Do you guys have any questions? Oh, we have another birthday. Timothy, happy birthday. <laughs> it's the wow. birthday week show. <laughs> Yay. We have two in July, the baby and then the middle grandchild. Oh, okay. In, one on the 7th, one on the 14th. 
That's fantastic. So uh, that's actually where you do find your brother uh, metallic thread is from your brother dealer. So check, ask your brother dealer if they can get some in. If they can't, you could always call a different brother dealer, but I'll bet you your brother dealer can get it. Unless it's, you know, with this whole COVID thing, a lot of things have been back ordered. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything, any other questions before we wrap it up? Everybody's saying hello, hello. Oh, you're welcome, Ibby. She said, thank you for such a wonderful show. A lot of information. Well, you're well, welcome. You. So thank you for watching. We love doing it. So now, Kathy, you have, let's see, what time is your dinner party that you have to have that finished by? Um, <laughs> July 4th at noon. <laughs> Perfect. We wish you, I bet you a lot of people are saying, I wish we could just come to your house and watch you guys. Well, that would be great because you could watch her put the edging on the quilt, which would be fantastic. <laughs> yeah. That's the bye week. Everybody say thank you. First cake goes on. His smash cake. We're going to put his smash cake on that runner. So it'll definitely need to be washed afterwards. <laughs> Well, I guess we're going to, you can let us know how well your metallic thread held up, right? I will. <laughs> awesome. Well, I hope you both have a wonderful long weekend, hopefully. Um, enjoy the sunshine. Now, what part of the country are you each in? I'm in the I'm Chicago in, area. And I'm in Florida, so we're getting rain and there's more rain coming. So Barb, I thought you were right across the lake from me. I couldn't remember, but that means you have had the same rain as we've had. So get your rowboat out because this weekend's going to be gorgeous. <laughs> yes, finally. Finally, <laughs> finally. So thank you all for watching. This has been a fantastic show for a wrap for a week. I love it. And uh, don't forget, when you're working on your projects, be sure to tag Brother. They love to see what you're working on. Let me just make sure that you have... Uh, their Instagram right here, right above us. Uh, go to tag them because they love to share what you're working on. I always love to see what you're working on because I'm in every show, so I get to see everything, and I love it. I don't actually do all the projects, though, but it's on my list. I love the way that you guys took those that you didn't have to hand draw them, though. And that's one thing that I always comes up. I'm not a very good sketcher, or I have to trace, or whatever. And by the way, I just received three coloring books. Well, actually... I received three coloring books to give to some of my nieces and nephews, <laughs> but I was scanning through there. Oh my goodness. There were some fantastic designs that I could use for this. There you go. Little trains, little trucks, little, all those things that I am not very good at drawing, you know, all that stuff. All right. And don't forget that brother sews crafting and sewing on both sides. The blogs are up. I put the websites down below so you can go there, sign up for their newsletter. You always hear about the specials and you'll hear about what shows are coming up next. So in the meantime, everyone have a nice long weekend. Just to give you a little heads up on Tuesday, the show is going to be a little bit later with Joanne and that won't be until I believe three. We decided that we both were going to be traveling back from the weekend. Well, I think she, I know I am <laughs> and I didn't want to get stuck in traffic and miss the show. So I wish both of both of you on each side, I wish you both a wonderful, uh, wonderful weekend. Brother Sewing and Crafting family, thank you for hanging out with us. This has been a lot of fun. Have a happy fourth. Bye.